Hello, everyone, and welcome to the IBU podcast. I have the pleasure today to host Professor Lorenzo Pignati, Director of Program of Architecture from Università d'Annunzio, Pescara, Italy. Professor Pignati is also Professor Emeritus of the University of Waterloo, Canada, and Scientific Consultant on the Rome program that the same university carries out in Italy. He is a founding partner of the Ottone Pignati Architective in Rome, which has concentrated its work on urban regener regeneration and on the design of public spaces. And he's also the project coordinator of Erasmus Plus Capacity Building in Higher Education, transforming architectural and civil engineering education towards sustainable model. Professor, wel uh, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, we, we're going to talk about the project, and I'm not sure how to call this project. I'm calling it Tatsasm, but maybe it's not correct. How do you call it? Everybody calls it in a different way. I call it Taksem or yeah. Tachems. I mean, you know, but, you know, it uh, has got multiple uh, pronunciations. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. Like, yeah. it's really hard to decide which is the correct way to call this project. So we're going to just call it project. Project, for this yes. for this podcast. <laughs> so you're coordinating this project with our Department of Architecture here from International Birch University. Uh, can you tell us how did this uh, collaboration happen? Well, it happened, um, uh, we are in Pescara. Pescara is a city uh, in Italy that overlooks the Adriatic, overlooks the Balkan region. And personally, I have been uh, interested in my research and my teaching uh, about, you know, what we have in front of Pescara, right? You know, uh, the sea, the Adriatic, but also uh, the Balkan region. So I have been promoting uh, several initiatives, several seminars, several kind of, you know, workshops in, different, in many different places, starting uh, in Rijeka many years ago, almost 20 years ago, and then coming down, you know, the Balkan Peninsula, uh, arriving to, um, to split uh, arriving to Belgrade, Zagreb, and finally uh, we arrived to Sarajevo. Um, my interest uh, it was about teaching and research, so um, in teaching we, uh, we started to, uh, to bring some students here to Sarajevo so they could see and kind of experience the city, and little by little we met uh, wonderful people here in Sarajevo, colleagues from Borch University, and we established this sort of relationship that happened at the beginning through sharing uh, kind of, you know, experiences and uh, research interests and, and, and teaching, and eventually developing this beautiful project. Yes, can you tell us more about the project, uh, what it's all about, uh, who are the partners, what are the goals of the project? Okay, so the partners are many. We have, uh, I, uh, I teach in Pescara, we have a, a one university in Italy, one university in Spain, one university in uh, Slovenia, and one university in um, Germany, Leipzig. Uh, these are the, let's say, the uh, the uh, uh, university from the kind of you know, western part of the uh, of Europe. Then we have a set of very interesting universities: uh, uh, three in uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, two in Armenia, and also two uh, in Bel in Belarus. Uh, now the Belarus partners are not part of the project anymore. Uh, but, you know, we started with them as well. Plus, we have a large number of uh, industries and kind of, you know, other kind of, you know, um, non-academic uh, institutions that are part of the project. So we're a broad uh, kind of, you know, uh, set of partners coming from different uh, areas of Europe, talking different languages, you know, and it's a great, uh, it's a great way of kind of sharing ideas and sharing experiences. Right? Right yes, uh, and the project is, is uh, about architectural education. education yes, yes. Uh, what are the greatest cha challenges and advantages <coughs> of the present time that professors of architecture in Europe are facing? Uh, okay, so the project yeah. is very much about uh, implementing new courses, kind of, you know, uh, uh, let's say, kind of, you know, uh, high, um, uh, working on the quality of architectural education. So either on developing new courses or uh, establishing uh, or, so, sorry, modernizing existing courses, right? You know, so we have a long list. Uh, every part of the university has a long list of courses that they would like to, uh, to uh, implement or, uh, or modify, right? You know, so it's very much about... Uh, teaching is a very much about the quality of uh, education. Now, the challenges that we face uh, in architectural education are many because uh, we live in a world that is changing every day. Uh, we live in a world uh, in the construction wor world where um, materials, where technologies uh, are 
changing every day, where we are challenged to follow these changes, you know, because we cannot remain, you know, with the old traditional systems of construction. We cannot remain with old technologies. But mostly we are in a world where digitalization is very important. So when I started school architecture, you know, I was doing everything by hand. Now uh, it's a completely different uh, condition. So the digital uh, way of teaching is something that has, has changed uh, dramatically, but in, in a positive way, right? You know, our, our way of teaching, our way of thinking mostly, and mostly our way of conceiving architecture because, um, you know, we are architects, engineers, we think about buildings, you know, until a certain moments we were kind of thinking about, you know, in, a, in one way, now we have the digital world that is uh, helping us to kind of, you know, to completely reverse our kind of, you know, way of looking at things. Is it hard to adapt uh, through this digitalization? It is. It's hard to adapt for a person like me that I'm older, right, you know, but, you know, for young uh, students, it's not hard. I mean, you know, they, they are raised in that way and, and, and they arrive and, and have a kind of, you know, digital mind or a sort of, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, a way of responding to that that is natural for, for them. Yes. What about the universities? Is it hard for them to, to follow this process and, and to switch from this maybe traditional ways of uh, teaching architecture to these modern uh, new ways that digitalization brings? Well, it's a challenge, right? It's a challenge because, uh, again, it depends from university to university. It depends on the kind of average age of, uh, of the professors, for instance, that makes a big difference. But definitely it's a challenge that all of us were facing, right? You know, and so, uh, you know, we, we must do that. You know, I, um, I, an exa- there is a very simple example. With coronavirus, we were obliged to shift from one kind of education to another one in the span of two weeks, right? You know, and we did it, right? You know, everybody did it in every country, right? You know, so we, you know, we have... Uh, a, a good reason to think that you know that this sort of di- digitalization is going to be always more and more uh, implemented in our teaching. Yes, we are, when we are forced to do something, yeah. then we just do it. We yeah, don't exactly, have time exactly, to, exactly. to and like, we do it well. Yeah. You know, and, and we so do it well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, when we are talking about uh, going moving toward, towards uh, digitalization in education, what would be like the right measure? For architectural education, can it be like a distance learning discipline? Would that be too much? Uh, would be a bit too much. Um, architectural education is based on two, uh, not on two principles, but on two uh, ideas, right? You know, um, we have uh, design studios, right? You know, both in architecture and in engineering, we have design studios where students work at project, right, you know, and they work day by day or week by week in developing uh, an idea and then developing a project, then bringing this project to a sort of, you know, idea of completion, right, you know. And this is something that we do in in studios, right, you know, uh, kind of, you know, working together, students working among themselves, working with the teachers and working with uh, kind of, you know, a daily sort of uh, set of relationship between teachers and students. And that cannot be changed, cannot be done remotely, right? You know, when we had to do remotely because of coronavirus, it was difficult. It was very, very difficult. And then we have other courses that are more theoretical, right? You know, that are about history or are, are about technology or, or are about kind of, you know, uh, other disciplines that could be done remotely. Uh, they're kind of more lecture courses, right? You know, where there is a sort of different relationship between the professor and the students, right? You know. Uh, students that attend classes, you know, and when in that case, uh, um, you know, I think that uh, part of that uh, education could be done remotely. But I think that in an architectural school or an architectural education, the kind of, you know, physical content, also the, you know, we need to travel, right, you know, uh, our students need to travel and go and see buildings, go and see cities, right, you know, so that, you know, has to be uh, done, has to continue, right, you know, so we cannot be remotely complete. Completely, yeah. yeah. But to keep this quality of education um, uh, that you are uh, talking about and, and doing through this uh, project, yeah. uh, can we say what have major activities you have completed so far d- through the project? Well, through the project, we are midway uh, into the project. We started in November um, 21. Um, and we'll be finishing November. No, sorry, we started November twenty, and we'll be finishing November twenty three. So we're mid, mid midway. It's a three year project. Yeah, yeah, it's a three years project. It's a, it's a long project. It's actually yeah. uh, very demanding. Um, basically, as I said earlier, um, the major task is to uh, implement new courses or modernize existing courses. So. 
uh, that's what we have been doing until now, right? You know, every part of the university has, uh, you know, um, basically kind of told us what, uh, they, what they needed, right? You know, what courses they needed to be modernized or implemented. Uh, we work on the syllabi and we work on the kind of, you know, on the, on the description of the courses. Uh, we're also w working on the quality uh, control of them, right, you know, to make sure that ev everything that is done uh, follows certain criteria, follows certain kind of, you know, uh, standards, right, you know. Then we have been uh, basically uh, also very much sharing uh, what we have, what each university has, right? You know, so starting from what we have or what we can offer, right? You know, this is the kind of you know base in which the project is developing, right? You know, so starting from what we have and kind of you know uh, somehow trying to uh, to get it better and to improve our quality, right? You know. Uh, so that's basically what we've been done until now. Um, the future uh, month uh, or the future year is mostly about implementing all that, right? You know, so having uh, exchanges of professors going from one university to another, uh, spending some time in the other university, do some teaching. So uh, now it's going to be more about kind of, you know, practicality, right? You know, now, now we have done more the kind of, you know, basic work, right? You know, and has been done very well. Uh, and now the future is about kind of, you know, somehow... Uh, you know, teaching in different universities, right? You know, some of us going to different universities and kind of, you know, doing uh, some teaching there. Okay. Uh, how are you satisfied with the results of the project so far? And what would you say was, is the greatest uh, benefit of this project that will make the greatest impact for the program and partners in universities? Well, we are, we are satisfied. We're, we're, I mean, I should say that we started under coronavirus, so it, it was difficult. So the first uh, more than a year, a year and a half, uh, we suffered of not being, not meeting each other in yes, person, yes. right? You know, so it was all done at the distance. And uh, but now, fortunately, we're here. We can meet each other in presence, and and this is great. So. Uh, I would say the greatest beneficiary is that, you know, certainly uh, our main goal would be reached. So uh, these courses will be uh, structured in a better manner, will be structured with a stronger curricula and with uh, all the kind of, you know, uh, all the information that uh, is needed. But I think the greatest benefit is about having met, meeting each other, right, you know, and sharing ideas. You know, there are a lot of things that are coming out not only, uh, you know, by kind of, you know, following the project, but there are other ideas that are coming out about the future. So it's very nice how we are really thinking about the future of this project, not only until November 23, but basically uh, for the future periods. Okay, uh, you already mentioned what kind of um, activities are expecting in the future, uh, but you mentioned that at, the, at the beginning of our podcast uh, that your research is focused on the Adriatic Balkan region. Uh, can you tell us more about that? Why is this topic closer to your heart? Uh, it's closer because traveling, coming here, right, you know, for uh, basically kind of, you know, academic purposes, uh, you know, I discovered that there is a sort of what I will call a neglected modernism, right? You know, I'm an architect, right? You know, so I, I'm interested about modern architecture in around the world. And I, I discovered what I will call a neglected modernism. So there, there are lots of interesting buildings, lots of kind of, you know, uh, good quality architecture, good quality urban planning that was done um, in this region, uh, let's say from the uh, post-war period onwards, right? You know? Um, uh, buildings and, and cities that, uh, at least in Italy, uh, I mean, were not that much known, right, you know. So I started to be interested about all these kind of things, right, you know, traveling again through uh, Slovenia, um, Serbia, Croatia, um, Bosnia, for Albania as well. I've been traveling and Montenegro. I've been traveling a lot, so I discovered this kind of, you know, very interesting kind of, you know, architecture that was not that well known, right, you know. So I started developing my interest on that. I started sharing uh, this interest with other people, with students as well, right, you know, um, it was, has been very successful. Uh, for instance, you know, we, we had many different uh, kind of courses in Pescara, taught in Pescara with uh, kind of topics related to Sarajevo, related to, to Split, uh, to, to, as I said, Rijeka earlier, Zagreb and Belgrade and so forth and so on. So I've been we, we've been working in many different cities and also publishing, uh, I've been publishing some books about this, you know, also have a little book on Sarajevo that I'm very happy about it. Great. Yeah. Um, how would you describe the architecture in Sarajevo? Well, 
basically what they just say. I mean, you know, well, Sarajevo is a unique city. I really love it, uh, you know, because you can go from the kind of Ottoman city to the austro hungarian yeah. city to the kind of, you know, present city. And it's uh, one next to the other in line, you know. Uh, in Italy, we're more used to, ha- I mean, our cities have been built one on top of the other one, right? You know, uh, the old one and then the more recent and the more recent, you know. In Sarajevo, you have this sort of linear uh, 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 linear valley, you know, where you start from the kind of, you know, Ottoman city and you go further, right, you know. And I think the character of Sarajevo is that, you know, the kind of, you know, coexistence of many different cultures, coexistence of many different architectural styles, coexistence of uh, many different city, uh, cities considered, in, you know, in from an urban planning point of view. So the more... Uh, chaotic uh, Ottoman city, the more ordered uh, uh, Austrian getting city, right, you know, and further uh, out, you know, the kind of socialist city that, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, the socialist city, uh, uh, you know, we can talk about that, you know, there are kind of, you know, difficult aspects about it, but certainly, you know, not only in Sarajevo, but in many kind of, you know, former Yugoslavian cities, is uh, there are great, great examples about that. And there are specific people in Sarajevo, like Jure Naidar, you know, that really contributed a lot to, uh, to the conception of uh, modern architecture uh, in Bosnia or modern architecture in the kind of Balkan region. Okay, I hope you enjoyed your visit to Sarajevo at this time. I have enjoyed it a lot. I will come back. So uh, it's not, it's not, you know, it's going, there's going to be more trips done to Sarajevo. Uh, as we said uh, through this podcast, uh, architectural education needs a change. To conclude that this podcast, uh, it needs to go to uh, through modernization, digitalization, and also, as you mentioned, students need to travel uh, to see how everything looks in the real world. Um, is there any other advice you would give them? Uh, to share ideas, uh, to meet other students, right? You know, because this is important not only to travel, but you know, to to, to come here, to come go with everyone. So uh, and 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 share their uh, way of thinking, their way of designing, their way of considering architecture with other with other things. What we are doing here with our colleagues, you know, because again, the great benefit of this project is about kind of you know meeting and share sharing different opinions right you know but they're very at the end they're very similar to each other but it's kind of you know that's what is uh, important as well thank you for your time thank you for coming and and for doing this podcast with me it was a pleasure well thank you very much thank you it's my pleasure